Hi, I'm Mattias Drugge. And I'm Tobi Hedin. You're watching Fly TV and today we're doing this. I need some coffee too, man. It's always nice weather. A warm welcome from a frozen Scandinavia. Uh, as you can see, we have great winter weather here. And we're gonna fish the new shopping river for sea run browns, as the American guys would say. Would say and uh, we call it sea trout. This time of year, it's pretty much like with winter steelhead. We need to go really deep and heavy, deep and dirty, to get the fish to move at all. Um, so me, myself and I, and the Swedish Yeti, we're gonna do some hardcore fishing here today. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we're gonna use the skagit technique and skagit lines and, and tips. And first of all, we're gonna explain a little bit about uh, the tips and the lines, how to set it up and, and why we do it the way we do. So when it comes to this thing with the line weight, um, I think Tube and I have pretty common tastes. Yeah. And uh, the general advice is don't go too heavy. I mean, it's okay to, to go up like a couple of grams extra on the rod, but if you go too far, you will kill the action in the rod. It won't work very good. It also varies a bit, I, I would say, when it comes to different rods. Yeah. We're very used to using those Scandi rods, which is really fast rods, kind of not a lot of love. They don't bend much, right? So, but if you use like a Skagit rod, yeah. for, for instance, our Cult or the Sixes or... Yeah. So what would you say? Is it like a couple of grams more? I would say so. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what rod it is and also uh, with everything with that, but... Up a little bit if you got a if you got a faster rod. Yeah. So don't overdo it, but go up a couple of, of, of grams from your average Scandi heads and you'll be set. thing is this, the tips, the T-tips. People ask, what, what is T? What does T stand for? What is a T-tip? Well, here in Scandinavia, we call them T-tips. And it, it's kind of silly because it's either T stands for tip or type. So it's tip-tips, yeah. <laughs> tip-top, tip right? Uh, the thing is, it's just a tip. But the sinking rate is quite interesting. And if you compare it to your, your normal uh, sinking lines. If you have a sink 8 line or a sink 6 line, it's the same with these guys. Um, if it says it's a sink 10, it actually is a sink 10. The thing with the tip, if you compare it to, to uh, the normal line, is that the line is very thick and the water will actually hold that line up in the surface more than a tip. The T-tips, so to speak, the tip tops, <laughs> no, the tips, uh, they are very, very thin and very heavy, so they will cut the water much, much more effective, uh, which brings the fly downs faster. So, lengthwise and weight-wise, that's where most of the questions are. And what do you think, Tube? What was a general good recommendation here? Yeah, I would say uh, 
if the if it's a smaller river uh, that's not so deep, I can use I go on a on a ten foot tip. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it depends on the speed on the water and everything. Mm -hmm. And if it, I fish a bigger river, uh, a deeper, where I want to fish really deep, yeah. uh, in some holes or something, yeah. I go up to 15 or 12 and a half foot. Exactly. Yeah. So you must think a little bit yourself yeah, and look it. about the water and everything. So that's it's quite easy. Yeah. Yeah? The, the thing is that it's a good thing to bring um, some extra tea tips in different length and, and weight to actually be able to play ball uh, and, and to be in the game and stay in the game during a day. If the water goes up or down or whatever, if the fish starts to move more uh, when, when the temperature in the river rises and everything, you can fish maybe a little bit faster, stuff like that. So make sure you have the tips with you so you can actually vary everything. Now I will show you how to do a snap tea cost. It's my favorite cast, and it's easy to learn. I start always to roll up the line, and I do the snap, the sweep, and out. That's it. Another question that pops up very often is, what kind of, of rod are we supposed to use casting Skagit? Can we use our old Scandi rods, and is a faster rod better than a slower, etc., etc.? The thing is, you can use whatever rod you want, but the good thing, I think, and one of the, the fantastic things about skagit fishing and skagit casting is that instead of, in these conditions, fishing great big flies that we used to do before with 15 or 16 foot rods, just to get them to carry the line and the fly out, we can today use 12 footers or even switch rods and cast those really, really large flies. So it's a, it's a great difference. Another aspect of it is, of course, that we can fish more effectively when we have a floating back part, and again, the tip that just goes down. And uh, when you got a deep hole or something, you can yeah. hang it, amend it, and get, exactly. the, get the fly down to yeah, it. It's easy to get the to fly down to are. the bucket. Yeah. If you have a standard sinking line, uh, Scandi head, for instance, you're fried when it comes to that conditions. If you want to fish behind rocks, for instance, the line will snag first. With the Skagit, it doesn't. It's just carry the flies around the rock and you can fish the hole or the, the seam after the stone. So, in my opinion, it's, it's absolutely fantastic to fish with. Uh, back to the rods anyway. If you use a, a stiffer rod, like a Scandi rod, you actually need to go up a little bit on the, the grain weight of the lines to make the rod bend. And that's why very many actually prefers to use a softer rod, like the Cult, for instance, that yeah. we have, or the Six. Yeah, yeah the Six is uh, good rod too. Yeah, the, the rod gives you more time, um, um, so to speak, to, to actually time your casts. It's it, easier. Uh, you don't need to be so perfect when you do the... When you always you got the touch and go. Exactly. Here you can slow down a little yeah. bit and feel, feel how yeah, everything's moving. That's right. Yeah. The thing is Dep that the anchoring is the... not so crucial oh. here, since we have a, a really heavy anchor in form of the, uh, the tip. So, uh, if you combine that, the Skagit line with a good anchor, the tip, and uh, a little bit of a softer rod, you've bought yourself time to, to actually do a very good cast. I'm gonna run you through one of the most common cast when it comes to Skagit, and that's the peripoke. The peripoke is basically what we here in Scandinavia has known for many years as the busky loop. So it doesn't matter really, busky loop, busky cast or peripoke. Here is how it's done. Switch up the leader on the surface, go around, plant the anchor up streams of you, put the line down, round, out and away. There you are. That's the peripoke. Another cast which is really useful when it comes to Skagit casting is actually the double spay. And uh, most casters can, can do that already, so I'll just show you the basics. So what I do is lift the tip of the rod, up with the line, down and away. There you go, double spay, easy peasy. Yeah, fish on! Pretty good fish. Yeah, nice one. Oh. It, it 
came off. Well, try for it again. To expand our Skagit range for this year, we brought out some new tips and a new back part, or a, a Skagit head, which is intermediate. And uh, why intermediate, some people say? Well, what do you say, Tuba? Why yeah. intermediate? Yeah, you can fish deeper with yeah. intermediate. And uh, I used to very much use intermediate lines uh, when I fish in the autumn or fall exactly. for uh, sea trout yeah. and use a whole intermediate line yeah. and uh, just to get the stealthy mood and everything for the fish and you, you can come down a little bit with the big flies yeah. when you fish in, in faster streams and yeah. everything yeah. and they hold down the fly a little yeah. bit and it's like uh, stealth mode yeah no I totally agree yeah. it's a great thing you know actually to cut just the seam uh, of the stream and get the line down this little bit and, and not making a V on the surface that will actually, uh, in, in the autumn, yeah. it, it'll spook the fish instead of attracting them. During conditions like this, when it's really, really cold, winter time or, or late uh, autumn, and you want to get down, it's, it's actually crucial to get down the speed of, of the fly. And what you do with the intermediate part is to cut through the, the, the top part of the current, which is very often fast, and it slows down the line and mm. it sinks faster and you'll actually reach the fish easier in that sense. So it'll beat probably any uh, Scandi head sinking once yeah, yeah. and you'll fish more effective since you get this angle on the tip here and the line here. Yeah. So here's the new Ace Skagit Intermediate. Uh, comes in a full range that will suit your rod and many more. Um, it's a great taper, easy to cast, flies beautifully and carries over both big flies and, and heavy yeah. tips. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. yeah. That's and great, um, to, to add a little bit extra to that, we have all the new tips. Yeah. It's three tips, so to speak, uh, type of tips. It's a floater. It's uh, intermediate and it's also a sink three. So um, that'll make your, your uh, schedule set up pretty easy uh, in any condition. All types of, of uh, new tips comes in three different lengths as well. So you can adjust them to, to the conditions you fish in. Yeah, both 10, 12 and 15 feet. Yeah. So. No, it's, it's pretty complete, guys. Yeah. It's just up to you now to actually go out and catch them. And guys, one more really important thing. Men with beard catch more fish. They actually do. And another thing is that, of course, all our lines and tips are pre-looped with factory-made, fantastic, neat loops and all the information is printed on the line to make it easy for you, right? So, on this beautiful intermediate Skagit head, it actually reads, men with beard catch more fish. <laughs> no, not really. It actually says the gram and the grain weight. And it's the same on the tips. So, it's all up to you now. Go fish. So, we uh, refueled a little bit, went upstream, and uh, we'll try for, for some fresh fish called Greenlanders up here. We'll have a go at it. <laughs> 